Hey all, welcome to ZLS number 20, kind of crazy, let me switch the background there, kind of crazy is our, uh, I guess we finished four whole weeks now, four whole weeks minus one day, I didn't do that first Monday, I started on a Tuesday, but it's been pretty cool to have Nicole and Lars on the last couple episodes, uh, going back to basics today, going to get anyone to join me today, but uh, I've got, I think I've got some, some interesting guests lined up pretty soon. The, the ones for this week I'm super excited about. We've got Aaron Frost, of course, coming tomorrow to talk about Scully. Uh, Jeff Cross coming by. Brandon. Uh, Brandon's usually in chat. I don't see him today, though. But Brandon's coming on Friday, and of course, Wes going to be coming by Wednesday. To, uh, we're going to see if we can't get a view app inside of our NX workspace here, I think. It'll be, it'll be fun. <laughs> I know nothing about view, but it'll be fun. Um, I'm looking through the project here to see where we had left off last Wednesday. Let's just take a look at uh, the notes from that Wednesday. So this was about making our paginator form as I recall, we had written out end-to-end -to -end tests. We hadn't gotten everything working quite yet, but for the most part, our use case was there. Of course, the styles aren't great, but that's what you get when you're with me. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> uh, for today, this is kind of what I was thinking we'd do. Um, we'll start out trying to finish our pagination form. As I recall, we'll still need to make sure previous and next buttons work as expected. Uh, I don't think they're doing anything right now, so we're going to want to make sure when we click them, it'll update the pagination state. And we'll also probably want to make sure that these are disabled in certain cases. So, um, in addition to that, we're also going to want to make sure we handle cases where the total number of pages changes to less than the current page. Um, so, I don't know if we encountered this yet actually, but the idea is um, like we could be on page nine, but then the user clicks to change it. So instead of like showing five items per page, they were showing 50 items per page. And then there's only one page left, but this current state is still page nine. I'm pretty sure that's broken in our current app right now. So we'll write an end to end test to see that, um, and see that situation and correct it. Um, Next is, after that, I kind of want to create a larger form that is kind of the case I was talking about just there. Um, a larger form that uses a pagination form but combines it with a total item count as an input and a items per page drop down. So this could help us control, you know, how many, um, how many items uh, we can see per page, give the user some more, uh, some more control over that and total item in count. This will be helpful for like, if we have a table somewhere down the line, Lord knows I love a good table. <laughs> we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to uh, kind of adjust this via the input. And then um, this will just kind of wrap this other pa pagination form. And I hope that by doing this, we can kind of see, uh, I think that this would come up with my conversation with Lars on Friday talking about forms a little bit. So we have the control value accessor pattern or uh, interface. I guess it's a feature really of the, of the forms library from Angular. And what the control value accessor allows us to do is it allows us to just create a form control so we can, wh where this component is consumed, we can just kind of control it through that form control object. Uh, the same way you would with Angular reactive forms on like a number input or a string input or a text input rather, uh, you know, something like that. So, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how we can use that to kind of make working with forms a bit more manageable. I know um, just from experience working with forms, I often encounter situations where I'm like, I could just kind of get that all in a form group here. Uh, and then I try it and bad things happen and there's weird bugs and weird subscriptions and observables going off all over the place. And, uh, yeah. 
So, anyways, uh, let's jump into let's jump into finishing our pagination form. Let's get started by just running Cypress here. ETE and this is called, I believe, our circle web client ETE. Oh, I'm running the wrong one actually. That's because I didn't use my NX uh, console. <laughs> Let's run, it, let's run it this way, because I actually, we actually built our own test bed, as I recall, specifically for our form stuff. Um, uh, what happened there? Okay. Let's run that. Interesting. Console seems different. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the theme. I think I put in a new theme recently, but there you go. Let's try to catch the Cypress over on this screen so we can kind of keep it sequestered over here. Where'd it go? Cypress, where are you? Could be anywhere. There it is. <laughs> oh no, I didn't want it in watch mode. Ooh. All right, well, let's, we'll see if our test finish. This doesn't look promising though. Sometimes doing is probably eating up a lot of processing. Let me see. Try killing some stuff here. I really just have StreamYard going. Let's see. Well, all my specs pass. That's good at least. But I, I really wanted to learn this in Watch. Let's just find that option and click it. Let's do that. Go. Well, that's opening up. Let's see if we can jump into the pagination code. Pagination component. If we can see is the TypeScript we've already written. We can try to grab Cypress over here real quick. Come on, Cypress, you can do it. Oh, it ended up on my other monitor. That's not Cypress's fault. All right. There we go. I'll kind of just talk us through the, what we've got working so far. We should be able to interact with it too. Um, okay, so the first test just tested. If we clicked on a page, would it update? Second test started... Um, adjusting, testing things for uh, pages adjusting on the inside. So we're not, we, I think we would never show, the idea is we'd always show five in the middle. We would potentially show this first and potentially, uh, so, so we'd show the first if it's not inside the range of our five. We'd show a last if it's also not inside the range of our five. But we only want to show that ellipsis when um, when there is a gap between these the two things. So we actually have code here. These five are determined, the two through the six. And then we'll always show the first one, but because the first one, there's no gap between this and this one, there's no ellipsis. So that looks good. And the test is testing for that. Um, the, this test is testing for the, that ellipsis case. The next thing we're going to want to make sure we have working right is previous and next. Um, they should adjust the current page, uh, or the value rather. That's really how we're controlling that current page, is through the form's value. Uh, so if you think about this, this whole thing 
um, is a form uh, wrapped inside a angular component here. So we're going to want to make sure previous and next update that appropriately and we're also going to want to make sure we disable those buttons when it's appropriate. So like uh, when we're on the max page we should probably disable next. And probably if we're in a situation where there's one total page. Oh, this is the issue I was talking about for the next part. Uh, if we're on a curved page that is above what the total pages is. It seems like we have some weird situations there. But if we're on page one and there's a total pages of one, we should probably disable both of them, I, I think. So we'll, we'll write some tests for that. Let's uh, get started over there. Um, I think this we'll, we'll make this as two separate tests, one for this case specifically, and one for just pressing uh, previous and next. Uh, maybe we'll test next until we get to the end to make sure it's disabled, and then uh, click previous until we get to the other end to make sure it's disabled. Uh, so let's go to where we're writing these end-to-end -end tests. So that's in our form test bed, end-to-end, uh, -end, and inside this app spec. Um, so these are the tests we've already written. Then we'll add a new one here. And just put it. Uh, clicking previous and next adjusts value and and these buttons disable correctly. That's decent enough, I suppose. Uh, let's see if we can copy some stuff from here. Um, let's just copy from this for now. So we should see it. This value should be one at the start. Selected should be one. Now we'll see. I think we can just do. Um, I think we can just do Psydoc contains next. That should give us the button and clicking it. Uh, so we can do something like this. Once we click it the first time, we should see two. And in both the value and looking for that selected CSS tag. So the selected is what's making the, the button have a background color of blue for now. Don't worry, Nicole has promised to help me with this. So uh, with styles, hopefully we'll see some, some better styles from this eventually. But I think that looks about right. I'm gonna run it and make sure we fail. And then we'll see if we can get this to pass and that'll be a good first step. Um, did I do this in the wrong? Uh, maybe I need to go back to the tests. Cause I added a new test. Let's see, let's stop that one and start it up again. No, it's only getting those three. Did I do something wrong here? Oh, I didn't save. That'll do it. There we go, there's our fourth test. All right, so we can see Cypress click next. We should have seen the blue background go behind the two. We should have seen the value get set to two. Neither of those things happened, so we're failing right now. Uh, but let's make that work. Uh, so we have our TypeScript here. I always like having a template on the left-hand side, uh, TypeScript on the right. Let's clear some of this stuff out. Uh, I keep adding strange. There it is. All right, um, so really we just want to add an on click to these buttons. And let's see, what did we do here for select page? It's really just be select page. Maybe we can just call click and do select page, like current page plus one. I think that would probably work. Um, yeah, we could we should be able to do that. Let's see. Where is there to select page? 
It's a value page. All right, that's really all we need. Let's do that up here. So we'll say, uh, let's fix them both. Click. And we'll say, uh, select page. And this will take, if we look at the form control, our value, our source of truth is pretty much this form control. So we're gonna say current page control dot value. All right. Uh, and we're for previous, we're gonna to wanna to say minus one. So whatever the current page is on, we're on right now, minus one. Let's just grab this. And throw it in. Plus one. I think that'll get us here. Let's rerun the tests. We should make our, our test pass. It's going to run all of them. Maybe I should uh, get rid of the first three. Let's get rid of the first three while we're running it. Just to make it go a little quicker. Uh, just going to comment them out to do so. Um, Make sure these are all commented out together. There we go. So just the ones running, it's going. Let's do this a couple more times. <laughs> kind of silly. So that's three, that's four, and that's five. Let's adjust these. Uh, threes. Yeah, that works. Fours, fives. We go. We run. All right, going all the way up to five. Now, once we get to five, we should say uh, side dot get. And this should be next. Um, I think like should and then be disabled. Yeah, that's the thing. Cool. <laughs> Let's try that. Uh, that should fail. Now, because there we go, and there it fails. Um, oh, it's because of, let's try this contains. I expected that to immediately fail. Expected, but oh, well, maybe it doesn't immediately fail. Maybe Cypress does give it time to go disabled, but it's not going disabled now. If I click it, what happens? Yeah, I click it, bad things can happen. So let's say, make sure we wrap that up real nice and pretty. Uh, so pretty much, I think we'll just need to do this in our templating. Uh, we can just say up here, uh, disabled, and say this is equal to uh, current page control dot value is equal to total pages, I believe. I really need to use the NGR slab pipe on the total pages replay subject, I think. I think this will work, but let me make a note here. Uh, how does this work again? Yeah. Note. Should use Total pages replay subject rather than the total pages input source of truth. So I would just do this by probably somewhere at the top level doing an ng container, uh, call in total pages. I'd have to make it non-private so the template could see it. And then we just call that like a uh, total pages. Um, I think this would work. Let's, let's try it now and see. Oh, that was totally the wrong button. We did it on previous. We needed to do it on next. Uh, let's put it on next. Let's add it to previous while we're here. So previous would be if the current page value is, it's always going to be if it's on the one. So let's try that. 
and we'll need to rerun. All right, so we got to five, and next went disabled. Can't click it. Looks good. Um, previous looks like it's doing the right thing, but let's make sure we added the automated test to make sure that's working. I kind of jumped ahead of myself there. Pretty much, we need to run this whole thing in reverse. Let's see if I can just copy and paste it just right. Yeah, we'll try to get too fancy. Uh, let's start with this one. Go down. So, this one will say previous. And this should be. Four, then a three, then a two, and then a one, and then previous should be disabled. Let's put a little break in here just to help our eyes. And let's see. I think that worked. Let's re refresh it so we can actually see it. Not that I don't distrust you, Cypress. I just like seeing you do your thing. It's very satisfying to see this and no, know I would have had to do this and my humanness would have probably messed something up about it. So, very satisfying. I think we got that working to the point where we can check that off. Let's go uh, mark it as done. Done. And next up is make sure to handle cases where total number of pages changes to less than the current page. So let's make a new test for this. Um, we'll rerun all of these later, but let's, I'm just gonna copy this one here and then comment it out and we'll paste one below. We'll say here, it should behave reasonably if the total pages changes to larger uh, value larger than the current page or value smaller than right total pages yeah all right so we come in uh we get a one and then we'll should say sci.contains five dot click. So this will click on the fifth button. And then let's see if I can grab this from a previous test where we did it. This is just right here. Um, this may not give us exactly what we want. Let's see if we can delete all this stuff below. So I want the user to kind of select everything and then type in a two, let's say. Um, let's assert these things quick, it doesn't cost us much. Um, does Cypress give us like a select all? Select, select an option. No, that's for like a select uh, tag. Um, let me Google that real quick. Let's see where'd Chrome go. Where'd you go, Chrome? Oh, here you are. Uh, let's see in here. Let's just say Cypress uh, HTML input select all hey all out 58 good to see you again it was nice talking to you yesterday uh trying to figure out how to get cypress to select all in a text input i don't know if it's a thing i don't know if it's a thing or not i know type will like kind of append to things and i could clear it but i don't want to clear it i just kind of want to select all and then type over it i'm not sure if there's a good way to do that or not but that's what I'm trying to figure out. Let's see. Um, so this will, I guess I could kind of like 
Yeah, I could send a control A. Or I could do like a shift and left arrow. Uh, how would I send a control A in the same thing? Let's see. Let's try it uh, where we just type in control A and then five activates the control P. Is there, is there like a stop to let go of the control? Uh, I'm not really sure how the scripting is gonna work here. Text pass the type, we also include. I guess I, I think I gotta do it in two types, right? I gotta do a type as control plus A and then a type as um, as my three. Let's try that. So we'll say type Control A and then type two. Let's see if that works. Doesn't seem like it worked. Got a fifty two in there. Let's see. Uh, probably won't work. It's not recognized. Okay. Let's try. Google in it. I press control A. <laughs> um, key mod modifiers, type shift. To do. No, so I could clear it all out. I was thinking what I, what I want to do is for the state to go right from uh, from having a total pages of five to having a total pages of two. I think if I clear it out, what's actually going to happen is it's going to do a third jump in there. So I'm trying to see if I can skip that. If I can't figure this out in a reasonable amount of time, I'll just do clear and, and drop the two in like you're saying. But let's see. Four. I want to understand how to do this, do Cypress better. Cypress is is interesting the the asynchronous nature of it it's like it's asynchronous without it being asynchronous which is interesting <laughs> it uh things seem to work really well when you can do things simply with their api but when you get when you're trying to do something a little more interesting things things seem to get weird quick like you gotta you gotta start chaining lens it seems like uh, to do some of the stuff i'd want to do but, or maybe use commands, I don't know. Filter out empty string. Yeah, I saw, um, I was looking up on NPM the other day. Uh, there's like a uh, Cypress Promisify that looked promising. <laughs> no pun intended. But um, the idea is you could, you could add a chainable, it adds a chainable called Promisify <laughs> Epson <in> chat. <laughs> they uh, they added a Promiseify. I think that was the name of it. Promiseify chain. So you could chain on a Promiseify to the end of something like this, and then you could await it inside of a. You could make this function async and call it uh, await it, so you don't have to like chain thens together for some of these things. Uh, let me just try clearing. I think that I think we'll still be able to see the error I'm talking about. So let me just put a note in here. Uh, probably better to figure out control all or select all. Anyways, let's see how that works. 
We still have the error we kind of mentioned. This makes no sense at all. If I click on two, things kind of correct themselves though. Um, let's see. I did say I was going to add another test case in here. Let me add that in real quick. Um, I want to make sure I'm living up to my promises. No, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, it should disable both preview and next when current pages or when total pages is one. Make sure this and we should say so get we'll get this where it go boom total page is clear and type in one and then just add these two lines. Save. So both previous and next should be disabled. Let's make sure that runs real quick. Yeah, that passed. So I can comment it out for now as we're working through this next one. All right. Um, so this should be like this. And then we should see. Um, See how we did this in some of the other ones. This is where that Cypress stuff comes in tricky uh, all out. I was, I was thinking, so I was hypothesizing that probably the best way to do this is to write some sort of command that's going to get all the buttons with my options on them. Combine them into an array and just like assert the array is what I want. Uh, I can't, it's, it seems kind of difficult to do that from what I'm seeing from the Cypress API. Maybe I'm just being silly about something there, but that would be really helpful for here. But in the absence of that, I think, does this have a special selector? Yeah. Let's copy that one. And we should say sci.get that. I think. Um, oh, what am I doing? And then this dot should and then this is like not uh, exist there we go that should be enough to to catch this case so we said last button should not exist in the dom but it does so that's our issue let's see if we can make that happen now um, so really uh, what I want to do, I think we're going to solve this by setting up a new subscription to listen to our total pages replay subject. And we'll check it every time the total pages changes, we'll add in a check there to say if the, if the value of our form is greater than this, then, um, then we'll, then we'll adjust the value of the form. I think that should work. Let's try that. Um, so we'll say as soon as we get the um, situation options. Okay, so that's so then my, oh, and I even had a note here. Um, cool. So we'll add this in here. We'll say this dot total pages. I'm wondering here if I need to combine this with the with the value changes observable, but I don't think so. I think if I combine it with the value changes of the form, it's going to kind of spiral off because every time I'll have to adjust it, it'll actually be adjusting value. So we'll, we'll start with total pages. and uh, We'll uh, pipe on this. We'll say... Well, let's just subscribe on it. 
right, who just want to subscribe to listen to this every time it changes. Well, I do want to at least put a take until here. Take until this dot destroying. And we'll subscribe. Total pages. So we'll say if total pages is less than this dot form uh, this dot what do I call it this dot current page control dot value then we will set this dot current page control dot value set it to our total pages Uh, I need to call set value. There we go. That would have been bad. There we go. Um, let's see if this works. Let's rerun it. Something weird happened there. That's not good. Let's see. Expected null not to exist. Well, at least the last one's gone. <laughs> Uh, let's see what's going on in this. No errors, actually. That's interesting. Um, let's see, run it again. Yeah, that's definitely not right. Um, value is just kind of going. Let's see what's happening in here. So total pages is less than current page dot value. Uh, so let's just put in here console dot log total, total pages total pages being bad and console logging rather than debugging, but that's okay. Uh, form value this dot current value. Let's see what's happening here. Let's rerun. Let's see what the console gave us. Total pages was five. Form value is one. So that did nothing. Maybe I should just filter out those areas. That's okay. All right, total value, total pages was null. That's where we cleared it. <laughs> um, let's filter out nulls. Maybe that's our issue. I think that's probably our issue. Uh, yeah, because it's definitely setting things to null there. All right, and it's probably a good thing that we cleared it out, huh? <laughs> probably a good thing, because now we can figure this part out. Um, so let's say here we'll filter. Well, let's add it to the if here. If total pages null. So if this was null, that could be less. Okay. So we'll just say if total pages is null, let's return. Now let's filter that out. This seems silly. Uh, let's filter here. X X is not equal to null. So I think either either of these ways would be about the same thing. But what I'm doing here is I'm filtering the total pages stream. So that if we ever get a situation like that where the user actually clears it all the way out, or or something happens where this input comes in null. We're at least not looking at that in terms of our stream. So when the when the user was erasing everything, we had this like null state that was messing our stuff up here. Uh, this will filter that out from the stream. So inside of our subscribe, we will only see situations where our total pages has some value in it at least. It'd still be negative, technically. But let's see. Let's see if this fixes things. There you go. That looks more correct. Interesting to see a null appear in there, though. 
<laughs> Alrighty. Um, just testing around, make sure this all looks right. Probably want this to the side of this anyways, but that works. I think we're done with this in terms of what I had planned. Let's try moving on to this one here. We got about 20 minutes. I think we could maybe do it. We'll see. <laughs> Probably not, but we'll see. Uh, and maybe we can at least get the, the component in here. So let's use our handy dandy uh, NX console. We're going to generate a new component. Um, let's see. So I want this to be, I just want to do a regular component from Angular. What did I call this one? Is this pagination? Let's call this one paginator. <laughs> yeah, this definitely looks interesting. Uh, I don't know if that's me or I am, I am using the insiders version. So insiders may have broken something. Uh, insiders version of VS code, but there we go, Patchinator, and we want to make sure that this is in our forms. Um, forms testbed. Uh, it's the front end forms. There it is. Style, we'll make it SCSS. Change detection default. Sure. Make sure it's exported. Boom. That looks good. I'll run it. Uh, while I'm in here, I'll add, what did we call it in the end to end piece here? Um, oh, we didn't have really a component for it up here. I'll add a paginator testbed component into our forms testbed project. So will give us something to test it out in inside the test beta app. And I realized I'd have to, I, I hadn't done this part yet. Um, let's run that, run that. I'm gonna run it one more time with the pagination test bed here. And it goes run that okay um, let's do some quick surgery here so the pagination test is already pretty much all set or the, the test bed is really but it's just all an app uh, this app component so let's move it from here to here and move this from here here. Um, rid of some of this, import that. Import this, import that. Wait, is that deprecated? What is that? Deprecated? Huh. What do you know? I'll have to look into that. Use scheduled and concat all. I don't want to use that. <laughs> I just want to start with. Uh, is it, wait, is it starts? No. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Guess there's a string and you'll be fine. Yeah. It... Number rather. Uh it has number. Alright. <laughs> Whatever. That's a sad day. All right, I can get rid of this stuff now. 
Um, and you just get rid of this. Oh, I see. The most generic version of starts with is deprecated. Good to know. <laughs> um, okay. Do, do. So you're saying if I do like this as observable of a number, which it should be giving us out of the box, <laughs> then... I don't know. I guess that doesn't really help with this one, does it? Okay. Anyways, um, let's see. So inside of app component here, I'll just have some an unordered list with a list item. Call this one pagination. I think, I think the A goes around the LI, right? I think so, proper, proper semantics, whatever that means. Um, and we'll say router link equals pagination. And same thing for here, paginator. Um, and inside of our app module, let's bring in the router now. Router module import. <laughs> uh, all out. I don't know if you saw the. Um, let's let me see if I can highlight this comment. Probably get better at like running a show. Um, so typing on form control is in the official, um, is in the official, what did they call it? It wasn't a schedule. Uh, Angular released something that showed all the things they were working on and typed forms is on the list, but specifically just typed forms. Roadmap. Yes. <laughs> that is what I meant. <laughs> the roadmap. So Typed forms is on the list, but it's in the for later category, um, which is, um, well, I mean, probably expected. Uh, I, I wouldn't have ex expected it to be like on the top of their priority. We've, we've been getting along so far without it, all right. Uh, but there's also the ng-neat uh, forms package that will give you typed uh, form controls. And I hear it's pretty good. I've actually not ever used it myself, but um, it seems pretty good. I usually just end up, um, if, I'm, if I'm doing anything super intensive with forms, I'm using like control value accessor and factory functions to generate a form control. And when I do that, I extend the form control, it returns, the factory function returns, to overwrite the value and the value changes stream. So at least the piece that people have to work with in the API you create for them to work with the form, at least there you have type safety. And that's not that hard to do. You're, like, you're really just bolting it on top um, by saying, hey, this is this is this type. So uh, I don't know. It should be out of the box, but uh, it was released in a different time when any's were still running running wild. Uh, and let's say this, what is this, for root? Any paths in the array? We'll say path is pagination. And it's a pagination component. Um. I wish VS Code could figure these things out better. Uh, pagination component from pagination. Oh, it was my fault. That's right. Blame it on VS Code. I was already in here. Yeah, it's because I had to export them. Well, I didn't have to export them, but I did. 
probably remove that actually. Uh, there we go. That should need four. There we go. Let's remove our exports. I really don't need them. And I think that just about did it. Let's see. If I go to, this will break the spec files because they sent them still to the home page. I uh, need under here a uh, router outlet. There we go. Let's go to our app spec. It's at the top before each visit pagination. Let's make sure those still pass. So let's comment the rest of this crap out or uncomment them. I never really ran them all together. Make sure nothing I did about that subscription changed everything. Because it could. The unfortunate thing about all this. Oh, it looks like everything passed. And it looks like I have an extra carrot in there. Let's go back to the app component. Yeah, there it is. There we go. Excellent. All right. Let's see about hitting the test bed. So for now, let's just make a new just describe in here. Uh, let's say describe, and this one was for pagination. Boom. Describe pagination. And let's copy the before each here real quick. Pagination. All right. Should work. I don't know. Make sure we can at least get there. Um, so this should just say sci.git and we called it what the um, front end. What's the selector on it? Uh, if we go here, we're going to go to the paginator. Zach live stream paginator. That's what I like to see. Branded this properly. <laughs> All right. Uh, there you go. Paginator. Uh, is it not there? Oh yeah, it's not in the test bed yet. Fair enough. Fair enough. So we should say Zach live stream paginator. And paginator works. To comment out that other describe, how long does it take? Eight seconds. That's not terrible. I've seen I've seen unit tests that run slower than that. All right, so we'll just comment it out for now, though. There you go. All right, so we've got our thing to work on. Um, let's jump into the component. How much time? Five minutes. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, let's get into the paginator. Template on the left hand. TypeScript on the right. We're going to want to implement, um, I think we'll need on init. We're going to need on destroy. We're going to need on changes. We're going to need 
Uh, is the control value axis there? Yeah, there you go. Uh, we're not satisfied with that yet, but before we get there, let's add it to our providers. I'm going to say provide the ng value accessor token, and we're going to to provide it. We're going to use our existing class, which is our passionate. Wait, I'm in the wrong file. Oh, oh my. Uh, I'll do all this. This is the test bed we're in. There you go. Now, we'll, now we've got it. Paginator component and use multi. Um, oh, this is just multi. Yeah, it's true. Multi will let us make sure we can have multiple of them going at the same time, which we probably will. Implements on destroy on changes and it will implement control value accessible. All right, so if we think about this, you get rid of our NG on in it. I think we'll need the constructor either. Um, if we think about this, we're going to have a couple things going for us, we're going to have our input which is going to give us the total items. This will be a number. So it's some sort of list or array. We're going to have the total number of items being passed in uh, to this component. We'll need this to be able to work. Uh, so those are total items. We're going to need a uh, page size control going to be a form control. Um, I'm trying to think if I want a controller, if I just want separate controls or a group here. Let's do a group. Let's say form. And this will be a form group. Then those are the pieces, I believe. Uh, so let's start with, um, we're going to want a private destroying is a destroying is a, we can just create this now, a new void subject, subject of void and ng on destroy, we'll just call that, call next on it. To signal it. That will give us our destroying observable so we can just uh, turn our lifecycle hooks into observables like they should have been all along. And let's add the same thing for our on changes. Changes is simple changes. We'll say if changes dot total items. Uh, let's make a observable for this as well. Private total items is a replay subject of a number. Uh, it's a new play subject of number. We only want the one replay. All right, so if changes dot total items, this dot total items dot next, this dot total items. There we go. That will give us our one stream. This will give us our destroying stream. Now, I think we just need to implement our control value accessor stuff. So first is our write value. The and so our, our value here is, oh, let's, make a, let's make a type for it. Um, explore interface, paginator. 
uh, paginator, I don't know, what do we call it? Paginator state, we could call it the paginator value. Let's call it paginator value. So paginator value, there is, um, there's some amount of items per page, and there is a current page. That's really what's going on here. We would be able to determine everything else from that. So we'll say, um, uh, items per page is a number, and current page is also a number. So this will be really if there was typing on our form group, this is the typing we would pass into it. Um, so in our write value here, we'll call it paginator value, and we'll say if this dot form, and we'll just set the value easy peasy, set value b else. So if there is no form, we're going to create the form here. group, and we'll say here, what do we say this look like? Um, items per page is on current value. Okay, so items per page is a new form, control, b dot items per page, and then current page is a new form control with the same B dot current page. Alrighty. We're going to register on change. Pass in the function. So we'll say this dot form dot value changes dot pipe. We'll say um, what do we want to do? We want to ultimately subscribe to this and pass in that function. So pretty much what we're doing here, Angular is handing us off this callback function to call. Uh, so the idea is we'd call this whenever a value changed from inside of our internal state. And that would let the control or the, the form control on the outside uh, let things know about it. Uh, let things know that the value had changed. So we're going to subscribe to this. We're going to want to take until uh, this dot destroying. So when the component destroys, we'll stop listening to it. And we're also going to want to start with uh, this dot form dot value. I don't know if we'll need that or not. I always go back and forth on whether that's needed seems. We'll leave it in. We'll see if there's problems with it. I'll put a little question mark here. But this will uh, this will make sure that when things come in, uh, they get sent out. And if you look at what we did to, to write a value, uh, in the most for the most part, it's pretty easy. Like we just called set value on our form, and then we listen to value changes on it. And That'll work. Uh, we still need to do our register on touched, but I'm just not going to do anything for that. I'm just going to have this function in there to show that, or to at least satisfy the control value accessor interface. And I'm not going to mess with being enabled or disabled at this point. We could maybe do that at some point down the line, though. Is there a red? What's this red about? Am I missing it? Um, oh, there it is. I see. All right. I think our TypeScript's pretty much there. Let's go to our paginator template. Um, so the one thing we're going to want to have here is our pagination. And we'll say 
Well, let's do something outside here. So there's some div, let's just say. I don't know if we really want it to be a div, but for now we'll call it a div. I'm gonna wrap everything in that. We'll just give this a form group directive. Form group equals, and we'll call this uh, form. So that's what it's named down here. Um, inside here, we'll say form control name. And this, the name for this one was what? Uh, current page. Current page. And we'll need to pass in the total pages. We'll still need to figure out what that total pages is, though. So for now, I'll put, I don't know, let's just hard code it to 10. And we'll close it up. Don't need that question mark. So that'll give us our pagination. So this will give us like that thing we just worked on. But we're going to want to do a drop down here. Uh, so let's just do a select. And we'll give it the same thing for control name equals, uh, what do we call this? Items per page. And I don't know, let's say, so is this an option? Option, there you go. And value equals. I always forget whether I need. I think I think we need like an ng value here. And I think we need to wrap it in this, so it'll evaluate that as a number. And then have the five. Let's just do it like that. We'll hard code some ones in for now. Maybe we can make this configurable later on. Twenty-five. 15, 50, that 100 option, just for kicks. Um, and there we go. I think things are mostly wired up. We're still going to have to definitely change. This is going to be, need to be dynamic based on the value of this form control. And the value of this total items. Uh, but we can figure that out later. Let's see, is this showing up? Let's try just to rerun it. Okay. Um, control name. So we see this. Total pages. Does this need to be like so? I think it does. So it'll evaluate as a number. Refresh. Let's add some stuff. Well, we're over time. I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, you can kind of see this is where, where this will take us. Um, most of the bones are in there now. We're going to have to add some reactivity in some of these places, though. But I think it won't be that bad. I think we'll just use like an async pipe here on our total pages. And I think that's all we'll need pretty much. And we've got to figure out what's going on with this where we don't see the buttons actually. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll get to that next time. But it, it'll be a, a little while uh, before then because uh, tomorrow we've got uh, Aaron Frost on talk about Scully. Super excited about that. I've been working on a YouTube video for that, so uh, maybe we can get to a point where we can show some of it tomorrow. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe we'll show it a bit of it live on stream, but looking forward to just having a good conversation with Aaron. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for showing up all out. Always a pleasure. And uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye now.